Greetings, comrade, and welcome back to our series on workers and resources, Soviet Republic. And in this video, we're going to be celebrating the boom times, the good economic times that our advanced production has brought the people of our republic. Today, I'm going to be showing you the wondrous glory of our republic, as the most equal of our comrades have now gotten access to their very own automobiles completely crafted with the resources from our very own Republic. None of that relying on silly foreign materials or engineers crap. These are 100% our own vehicles. So before we continue, I just want to talk a little bit about the model vehicle we chose for the Republic. This is the Czechoslovakian Skoda 1200. And I did a little bit of research on it. I, I like Czechoslovakian vehicles, or I like Czechoslovakian products in general. They are known for the fine craftsmanship and fine products. So I wanted to choose something from that region. And I did a little bit of research on the vehicle. Apparently it's pretty advanced for its time. And it made it, I guess, kind of an easy choice for the people of Tavadishgrad. One of the interesting things I found while researching this vehicle was originally the Czechoslovakian designers wanted to have it be a front wheel drive vehicle which would be particularly advanced for the time and additionally having a front wheel drive vehicle is much preferable in winter climates such as the one we're experiencing right now um, but that being said apparently the Soviet designers shot it down because it was superior to what was being manufactured in the Soviet sphere at the time. So in any case, a little bit of trivia there for you about the Skoda 1200, the vehicle of our republic. So without further ado, let's jump into where we are. We are on the cusp of 1978, and since we have last convened, the republic has been thriving and prospering in a great number of ways, and it has been buoyed by two things, that is advanced manufacturing and of course logistics finally starting to connect all our desperate republics together and then being able to actually sell the goods that we make. So as sort of evidenced here, our railway to Petrograd and here is our train, as we'll follow it. So in any case, uh, our railway from the capital to Petrograd and thus the border has been complete, are allowing us to take whatever goods we make here down to Petrograd and sell it at the crossing. So first off, he's going to go to the warehouse and pick up any advanced electronics, clothing, and other goods that we might manufactured since he was last in the capital, so let's see what he's getting here. He's getting lots of mechanical components, lots of electronics, lots of electronic components, clothes, meat, and that's it, totaling for a whopping 170,000 ruples just from that, and now he's going to stop at the bulk construction yard, take any excess steel, which we have, as well as any excess prefabricated panels and bricks as well as he will take any excess uranium, which is something we will talk about later. He's actually got a little bit of here, 3.2 tons of uranium oxide. Anyway, now he's filled up on the bulk construction equipment and resources. He's gonna head off to the closet. And once it gets there, he is going to make for us a whopping 214,000 rubles. So this is what I mean by the economic boom. The economic boom by just connecting our advanced production in the capital to the border has allowed us to explode in prosperity. Over here at Petrograd, it remains mostly the same. Everybody is still happy and healthy. I tried to move more people in. I even built a university here, but there are no actual university jobs, I realized, after constructing this. 
So it kind of remains dormant. Again, not too much has changed in this city. The main thing I've done is built a clothing workshop, which I just import the fabric. It was mainly because I was having too many workers starting to live in this area. So many that they are starting to burn through all the fuel that we're producing. And we even have our own oil-fueled power plant as an offshoot to produce more power, which we then export for sale. So we're using oil on all fronts and trying to use it to grease the economic gears of our republic. In any case, as I was saying, I just built this because I was having excess workers. So it was just a cheap and easy thing that I could build for them to make money for me, essentially. Even though I'm importing all this fabric, the clothing that they manufacture is worth far, far more. So this guy, he just grabs it and runs it over to the border. I mean, how much does he have here? Almost 2,000 rubles worth of clothing. He only has a half ton. And he just kind of zips back and forth. A little extra stream of revenue. And as you can see, our train is already here. And it's already dumped most of his resources. And he's going to make the run back to the capital and do it all again. So let us talk about the second factor to the Republic's success and that is the advanced manufacturing. So as last we left off, of course, we finished our steel plant and from there it branches off to the mechanical components plant and we have this kind of distribution network in the back here. Keep it all fueled together. The main thing to keep in mind with advanced production is that just like for basic construction materials, coal is the backbone of that production chain Whereas for advanced materials, steel is the backbone of that production chain as just raw steel is converted into mechanical components which are then used in the construction of numerous different things but not in the construction of the electrical components which takes just pure steel right from the steel factory as you can see I forgot to lay this factory out in a way that I could get my forklifts back there so it's not a big deal we just have this little truck here he runs steel back and forth between the plants and he's able to keep it topped up very very easily we'll talk a bit about the plastic and the chemicals later another new resource we have begun to produce however unfortunately we haven't been able to produce it in the quantities that i would like so onwards to the real star of the show here, the electronics assembly, taking in the mechanical, electrical components as well as plastics to produce electronics, one of our major, major cash producers, especially exporting it to the Soviet bloc. The Soviet bloc pays more for advanced goods, whereas they pay less for basic resources, and the NATO bloc is the opposite. In any case, this is all connected to our beautiful, beautiful vehicle production line, which, as I said, produces our Skoda 1200s. And fortunately, this production line is actually able to get almost everything it needs. The only thing I have trouble with is fabrics. Usually it has enough plastics, but it looks like we're down a little bit right now. But all the electronics, all the electronic components, mechanical components, steel, everything else is produced at home. And I'm sure the citizens of Tafarishgrad take great pride in their home-built vehicles. Unfortunately, they couldn't design it themselves because I don't have that option. Either way, I think we chose a great blueprint. The funny thing is, though, I'm not actually selling any of the vehicles that I produce. All that I do is, when I have enough, I just send them over to the dealership and the dealership will assign a buyer and then they'll go to a parking spot. So I've been building parking lots to try and flush out the car infrastructure. Right now the only people who can own cars are university educated individuals so only our advanced workers can actually own a vehicle in the first place and this actually really helps everything because it helps our advanced workers be able to get to whatever job they have very quickly and easily and efficiently. You don't really need to worry about them once they have a car. You just put a parking lot outside of advanced 
building spaces and your university educated workers will just drive there. They can just easily drive to work and figure it out themselves. So that's one of the nice thing about limiting car ownership to university educated people only. I wonder if we can actually get some statistics. Car owners, 145. So still not that many people in the overall population pool, which is 20,000, which by the way has exploded recently. Ever since we finished this medical university, it seems like we have had way more doctors, people have been living longer, and again, ever since we started producing all these advanced materials, everybody's happy. We have a 90% happiness rating right now. We've also been getting a lot more immigrants moving into the Republic, so as I said, our population is exploding. So outside of that, the water spread remains about the same. The big new building we have here is a radio station. We still don't have as many people there as I would like. However, we are starting to actually broadcast a radio program to people. And I guess it's not having much of an effect yet, but hopefully it will. This is a fairly new addition to the Republic. But in any case, most of it is focused towards cultural enjoyment, a little bit of propaganda, a little bit of education, a little bit of preference for alcohol and enthusiasm for support and a touch of anti-religious propaganda to create what I hope would be an overall compelling radio show. Moving on to the outskirts of Comrade Town, we have the twin sort of villages of Borspain and Baraharad, both of which have undergone massive transformation and improvements. This village, I've kind of boxed myself in more than I would have liked, so I have gone the very undergone the painful process of evicting people from their small little villages and replacing them with you know more space conscious tenants that being said it's something i don't really like to do unless i have no choice uh, and in this case i have no choice but in most cases i do kind of like to keep the small little houses just as a cool aesthetic feel so, in any case, Borspain, actually, before I move over, has the hospital of the area, but it also has the advanced production building of the chemical plant. Or, sorry, that's the plastics factory. Here's the chemical plant, which takes in gravel and wood, which I, I just buy because it's really basic. Then the chemicals get exported to the plastics factory, which is where most of my chemicals are spent in plastics production. My main thing is a lack of workers, not a lack of resources. I've been trying desperately to move more people into this area. Part of the reason why I've been building all of these little uh, apartment complexes and getting rid of all of these small houses is to get more factories or to get more workers into these factories. And thus far, I have yet to accomplish my goal, but hopefully, we can get there. The big thing, however, is I really want to get people working in, well I really want to get resources into our uranium processing plant. Yes, I do have a uranium processing plant now. In fact, we have a uranium mine, which I found when I was just kind of clicking through my resource tabs. It was very close to our initial capital position here. So I've been trying to get workers here with this nice little gondola system, which has worked for me in the past. Unfortunately, I, I think it's a lack of workers that we're struggling with more than the inefficiency of the of the of the gondola system. Uh, communist gondola system. It's a great, wonderful ideological innovation. But unfortunately, it remains unutilized or not utilized to its maximum potential, more rather. In any case, moving on to our farm sector. Our farm sector it continues to grow. In fact, we don't have enough fields of anything. So over time, I've been building more and more fields so we can get more and more crops. Once we have, yeah, we're almost out of crops for a year at 129 tons left. And of course, these crops get delivered everywhere. They get delivered to the food, they get delivered to the alcohol, to the, uh, to the livestock, and of course, there is a connection here connecting them to the chemical plants and the 
fabric factories as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention that there's a fabric factory here as well because in addition to plastics, fabrics also require chemicals for manufacturing. Outside of that, I've had a much easier time filling in workers in this town because I have the ability... Oh no, that's not good. Temperature's too low. It's connected, it's got 90%. In any case, it might just have been like a particularly cold snap overwhelm them. I should be making it anything more than enough heat energy from the heating plant in the area. I should be able to cover all their needs. In any case, as I was saying, I'm having a much easier time building tenements here in this outskirts and it's having a much greater effect in filling out the workers. As you can see, we have a clothing factory here as well, which receives fabrics from the nearby fabric factory however it usually burns through them and has to rely a little bit on exports or sorry imports more rather that being said though most of these clothes go to the Tavadish Grand warehouse where where most of our various materials go to and then through the distribution office and our trucks they go to the warehouse and then distribute the resources to where they need to go. So we have trucks that will grab plastic and they should be taking it here to the uh, electrical component factory. Unfortunately, it looks like it's probably due to the snow that is keeping everybody from going to where they should be as fast as they should be, gathering the resources from the warehouse and sending them to where they need to be. So for example, the clothes are usually sent to the various stores in question, and then whatever is left over, we send out on the trains for sale. Onwards to Zelezhnygrad, or Iron Town, has become an important critical infrastructure connection between East and West, as it is a right in the middle of the map here. And also, as the name implies, it has the iron. And I have finally resolve the worker shortage as best I can for the iron by once again using this gondola system which in this case actually has been working out very very well the gondolas take they uh, get on and off right here in the middle of town so the workers don't have to go very far to actually get to their job and then of course the gondola takes them straight up into the mine and drops them off and takes them back when they're all done which honestly, I think this would be a pretty awesome way to get to and from work every day is to ride a gondola like this up to the top of a mountain. Although working in the iron mine itself would probably blow chunks. But as mentioned before, the great connection is finished. Another wonder of the Republic is the connection between East and West is that over time, Using mainly our own resources, but a little bit of bought resources as well, we have managed to connect a rail line to the western section of our republic. And right here at Triov is our main western capital. And unfortunately, it's not very well populated because I had to move people, a lot of people, out of it over time to get workers producing in other areas. But over time, people have started to move back especially as I filled it out with the necessary amenities. Thankfully now with the train we can bring in the coal, we can bring in any other resources, we can bring in food. It's all now interconnected into the rail network and can be brought to and from the cities very easily. So this particular city right now is producing something interesting which we won't get to in our video today but will be in the next and I would say penultimate video in the series um, will be on uh, aircraft manufacturing and the, and nuclear power will be the last I think those are the most advanced types of manufacturing but in order to get there we need aluminum so right now the aluminum plant is going ham <laughs> well it's got more uh, it's almost filled up its own export tanks in any case, it's going ham with the population in the area, but unfortunately that in and of itself is not aluminum. This is the aluminum plant, and I am waiting to build it because I just don't have 
the time I want to wait and the ability to bring in the resources right now to the eastern section to build this monstrosity. So it's going to be funded out of pocket and that's why I'm kind of sitting on my cash here. Part of this video was to enjoy the boom times and see how quickly we could fund this uh, construction project and it seems like it's coming faster than I thought. One of the things I've been doing off screen is cleaning up my supply chains a little bit, cleaning up the logic of everything, making sure everything is running as smoothly and effectively as possible. And one of the things that I've been doing is rewiring a lot of my electrical connections. A lot of my connections, especially in Tavadishgrad here, had too many buildings connected to them and I resolved most of that. However, there's kind of like a spot here where I just can't seem to resolve the electricity problems and what happens is that they just quickly they'll like turn on and off depending on how many buildings are drawing power simultaneously. So if too many buildings are drawing power, they'll start to get electricity problems. Or too many drawing buildings are drawing power simultaneously. I mean, as I said, we have our rail network built out here and already we have a platform here where we can take our coal and we are also taking the bukite from this little village, which again, we have not really fleshed out yet. This is going to be coming up. This is one of the next little bits on my list to accomplish is to flesh out this building here because it, we aren't getting the uh, kind of that we want because they, we don't have any workers. We have it all here, but we don't have any workers to put it into this train, which is funneling resources back and forth. This is the Western train right now. It's actually a very powerful train. It can travel at 120 kilometers an hour. So this thing's pretty advanced. I should just like upload AMSR train sounds from this game. That's all that would be is just sounds of the trains running back and forth. No music, nothing. Another project we are on the verge of finishing is our last bit of railway track headed to the NATO border. Unfortunately, because it's so far away from my construction depot, this uh, railway construction locomotive has been having one hell of a time getting this thing done. So eventually I'm gonna have to build another construction depot closer by. It's just not really on my priority list right now because I don't have the goods to export to the US block. I've got a truck who is taking the dry oxide, or the or what is it, the dry alumide? What the hell is it called? Aluminum oxide, sorry. <laughs> so I've got a truck that grabs the aluminum oxide and sends it to the NATO border, so that's helped me regain a little bit of my dollar reserves. Unfortunately, it's a pretty rough go for him, so he doesn't do it very efficiently. And then I am going to end off this playthrough, hopefully, by developing these last sort of untouched towns into scenic tourist destinations. So we can evolve from depressing Eastern European Petro State to reasonably nice place to have a vacation. So that gives you up to speed with, uh, I don't know what that would be, six or seven years of infrastructure development that have happened in this game. The main thing was getting this. This was definitely a long project. But now that it's built, as I said, it's very easy to get goods to and from the eastern section to the western section of the Republic. So who doesn't love stats? I know I love stats. I know you love stats. Let's look at some motherfucking stats. So I want to see last month what our import export ledger looks like. The most exciting thing in the world. So in terms of our import export, 
Looks like we did pretty good. So in terms of our actual money, it looks like we gained a total increase of 300,000 ruples that month. Pretty good. Most of our money came from the sale of electronics. Beautiful. This is the first time I've seen electronics overtake bitumen or fuel as the number one valued export of the Republic, which has we sold 35 tons of electronics to the Soviets, 39 tons of electronic components, 524 tons of bitumen, and 821 tons of fuel to round up the top four exports, all of which made over 100,000 rubles. Then of course we have clothes and power, and then steel and mechanical components, and then that uranium oxide, uh, by the way, I should mention that we just import the uranium ore and then refine it into oxide for sale. And then we are also making a little bit of money from our meat and bricks and gravel. I am wondering why booze is not showing up there. I thought I was selling booze, but I guess I might have ex uh, stopped it because we were selling too much. In any case, that's looking pretty good. So what are we still spending money on? A lot of it, almost a third of our actual import cost came from deliveries delivery fees, fabric and uranium ore, and plastics round out the top, and we're still not making enough crops. I'm still 277 crops behind. I would definitely like to increase that. But all in all, we're only 13, chem 13 tons of chemicals behind, which is definitely something I can make up for. 41 tons of fabric is going to be a lot harder though. And 21 tons of plastics we can also make up for. Either way, it's definitely doable, and we've cr completely crushed our food import costs. Now we only have to import 60 tons of food. Other than that, though, almost everything is made. Hooray! The snow is finally gone, and the goods can flow, and the snow plows can go back to being parked for another year. And one of the things I should do once I accumulate the money to build my large mega project is actually pave a lot of these roads because it's kind of hindering things. So one of the things I've noticed through this playthrough and trying to do as much as I can with my own internal resources is that paying for things out of pocket is actually the most beneficial for the really small and quick projects like building roads and small paths and rail lines and power stations and that kind of stuff. Whereas using your own resources and workers is really the way to go for the really big projects. Because um, like this one, I'm just having to really kind of idle and get nothing accomplished and save up a bunch of cash that I could be using for other things so I can get this aluminum project finished. It could be, oh, I forgot to mention, I built a secret police station. Ah, here they are. Unfortunately, they haven't really, you know, done anything. But they exist. They're around. They drive around and they try and figure out the loyalty of people. And they've done it some in some places. These people are 41%. 40. 40. Is it not unknown? Yeah, unknown, unknown, unknown. So, yeah, they got a lot of work to do. But it seems like, for the most part, people are hovering around the 40% mark. Another nice little building that we've built here is the City Hall slash Accounting Office. And with it, we can gain a much greater insight to the stats and demographics of our city, which is the, the capital of Vardestrad, the only one I've built one of these in. And as you can see, we've got almost 10,000 people living here, which is, you know, almost half of the entire Republic's population lives here in the capital. Pretty young people, average age, 30 years old, lots of productive workers, and we have zero adults still living with their parents. Yes, we have 115 car owners. Wow, 40 people have a computer, good for them. I don't know where they got it from. But most people are, are getting things like radios and televisions. Well, we got 40, 400 
people almost with university educations and only a quarter of them have vehicles so we still have lots of people who are eligible to purchase or quote unquote purchase vehicles before we can even think about opening it up to the uh, uneducated general public. Got another train headed out to Varishgrad full of delicious, delicious goods for export. Not as much as last time, just under 200,000 rubles. All right, we've got enough. I'm pulling the trigger on this bad boy. I think we'll be able to make it through with our oil production until the next shipment of goods makes it just been tighter than I wanted us to be or would like us to be. And, uh, budget. I went up. I noticed it went up slightly. It's going to be fluctuations in material prices. Well, I'll just leave that to do its thing and hope that my bank account doesn't run dry in the process. I feel like the boom times right now are, are slightly less boom times for some reason. Maybe we're, we're not getting enough coal is one of the big things here. We have to finally add in more coal. These people are producing 100 tons of coal ore a day. It feels like it should be a lot. I knew I had dollars in reserve for a reason. Now I have to resolve the problem of getting workers here because I get their main source of uh, transportation here kind of blocked. So let's at least get more footpath to this side. Well, I'm still actually struggling with finances more than I thought I would be. I'm using a lot to steel and coal and chemicals. So we're, I, I fixed the steel part. Coal I kind of fixed, but chemicals is going to be a rough one. Either way, we will hopefully start to make up for it with the lovely new aluminum plant, which is now in operation. Limit, oops, 30. You have 30 people, so I'll have more people producing aluminum, which is the actual money maker. I even have a truck that is taking the excess aluminum. Where the heck is he? Here he is. He's taking the excess aluminum to the NATO border and selling it. He's going to sell it for, oh man, he's going to sell it for 9 G's. How? Oh shit. I think I know what's wrong. Yeah, exactly. I forgot to connect to this road. I had to blow up a lot of this and reorganize the input just so I can get the road across here. And uh, it sent me back a lot because I'm going to have to rebuild this. Rebuild this conveyor belt, but you know, it's doable. I'm just waiting to like a bit of extra money and I'll be able to resolve it. That should get him out of here. Yeah, okay, good. We're both out of here. And they're both, uh, this is the guy who takes the aluminum oxide. So, we got both of them on the go shipping aluminum goods to NATO. Then the next part is of course going to be the aeronautics factory, but I'm thinking I should probably keep it in Tvadishgrad. Just because I already have all the advanced components I need there. Well, it took longer than I wanted to, but by July we're back in the money. We're back making pretty good profits from our uh, production in our republic. In the meantime, though, we're making pretty acceptable progress. And now the big question is, what am I going to turn my attention to that we have the aluminum plant in action? I should think about laying out my aerospace factory. I mean, yeah, I definitely could just build it back here and connect it into everything. Yay, I finally found a spot that I can flatten the terrain. 
enough that I can actually make this monstrosity. All right, I just had to flip this around to get the road on the other side, and once we're done, lamo. All right, well, this one will, of course, be done by our own in-house construction company. I'm gonna get me, of course, the, I'm gonna take Burahabad. Send them over. So let you guys too far away. Either way, they'll get started on building for this thing. And it's gonna take a while, but that's okay because I have a lot of work I need to do to flesh out the infrastructure of the east before I'm even ready to probably really start taking in the aluminum and building airplanes. But when I'm ready, hopefully this construction will be finished and this factory will be ready as well. So now I'm just going to be using my economic windfall to upgrade everything I can and hopefully make more and more money. Right now, because I have the money, I am just spending it out of pocket to build these roads. Like I said, for these small little upgrades, it's just so much more convenient to, to buy them out of pocket rather than wait for everything to get here. But with this, you know, I can kind of set it and forget it. And my boys will bring the resources and workers necessary to get the job done. As we slowly approach the end of 1978, I'm a little bit worried. We're doing okay in terms of our export-import balance. The issue is we're starting to run out of coal. We're finally getting to the point where our one coal mine in Shatkagrad is not enough. So I've had to make do with trying to build some coal mines in the very, very poor coal mines of Tavadishgrad in hopes that I can get some more into the actual pool. But over time, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna add more and more into my actual supply chain. The nice thing is that I've got this monstrosity of a conveyor belt already bringing coal to various different processing plants throughout the Republic, so it'll be easy enough to put people to work once I finish building the mines and getting the coal to where it needs to be. We're moving into November and uh, I know we're real <laughs> sitting here I'm like looking at my ledger book and monitoring my profits like a good communist and I am just really upset about how much this coal ore is kicking our ass. We need to get some more of its stat but I can't because I have a lot of money invested in other things so it's kind of oh yeah that's right don't worry everyone it'll be easily replaced I need to remedy the coal situation like I said it's coming along slowly but surely so it's almost winter time and I'm having my locomotive return to the east and grab coal and bring it to the western town so they don't all freeze to death during the winter. It's usually a annual trip he has to make and uh, it's a nice little it's a nice little drive. It's, it's nice I like to, to sometimes sit back and watch it kind of drive across the eastern European countryside. Fortunately the coal reserves of Zalezhnygrad are plentiful they have more than enough to go around, so this tree can easily take from them. In fact, they have a lo very large coaling station here in the town for the entire purpose as of bringing coal and therefore heat to the western part of the Republic. And off he goes, another well-run mission. You know, when I was a kid, my dad was obsessed with trains. Loved trains, had model trains, played railroad tycoon. And I always thought, God, when I was a kid, right, like, this seemed like such a dumb and boring game. Now I realize that as an adult, I'm doing the exact same thing that my dad did, just with a red coat of paint on it. Well, ain't that just a kicker? Price of coal ore on the global markets is up. That is, uh, yeah, that sucks. Um, I'm hoping that my coal supply will be enough to survive. 
especially survive during the winter. Line up, everybody. The next shipment of cars is hitting the dealership. I know that's probably a more efficient and effective way to do this, but I kind of like the <laughs> the idea. Of they all come in waves, right? And of course, I have it on randomized color, so they aren't all driving the same color. At least they may. Everyone may be driving the same car into Vodgrad, but at least it's not the same color. I just see so many people trudging to work at the automotive plant. Yeah, it's probably a good job. So in order to save costs on delivery, I can't believe I didn't think about this sooner. I'm just going to plop an aggregate storage right here in the middle of this conveyor belt, much closer to the borders. And as you can see, we will purchase this uh, We'll do this coal ore purchase, and with delivery, it comes out to 957 ruples. Versus if you were to do the purchase over in Tavadishgrad, that same purchase would cost us five th over th 5,000 ruples. Over five times the price. So hopefully, hopefully that will resolve some of our issues. Well, at the dawn of March 1979, I really don't think that there's much more I can do for this particular video until our airplane manufacturing is done. We don't really have anywhere to go. I was hoping to fill out the infrastructure of the East a little bit more, but unfortunately that kind of... Unfortunately, the coal pinch prevented me from doing so so i hope you guys will join us next time and in the next video we will be discussing air we will be discussing airplane manufacture and nuclear power and then in the last video for this series we'll go over tourism and then to finally bring myself up to all the new stuff for workers and resources i'm going to do an updated version of how to start a successful city with the new sewage update implemented and we'll go from there and then and then once I finish that I can easily just continue to update as any new additions come into the game so that's my plan going forward and with that I want to thank you guys for watching this video this has been the comrade signing off for now and until next time you guys take care so just a quick addendum I was just looking through things on our aluminum production side because I haven't really looked at it and we're finally doing well. Our little city here of uh, Trirov is finally starting to come to life and is able to deploy a couple of workers into the aluminum plant and we're actually getting some decent manufacturing done. We're actually managing to tie the cities of these republics together as I was hoping to do when I started this entire playthrough. So. Anyway, that's all I want to say, and that's actually all I got for this video.